Okay, let's get started on the front lights. The first thing that we're going to want to do is to remove the front grille. And to do that is pretty simple. You've actually got a couple of black tabs in here that you need to get the screwdriver around the back of and pull back. Basically, it's similar to all of the other tabs when you're taking the body apart. So you just get it in there, and it can be a bit of a squeeze, get it behind, pull back the black one, and do the same on the other side. It'll be clearer what I've done once we pull it out. Okay, so those are released. And then the grill is really only held in by these two bits here, the bonnet clips. So if you just give it a good tug, out it comes. And you can see the two little red tabs here. It's actually worth trying to preserve these because it helps keep the grill vertical when it's in the model however when you've got the body on it'll actually push it into place anyway and then very simply you can just lift out this back plate here which has got the light reflectors in it in theory it will be very simple to put leds in the bottom here too but we're only going to be putting the main headlights on what you need to do now is determine where the centers are and you certainly want them to be the same both sides so I'd be inclined to measure it. And the way that I did this was I measured across here and that is about 14 millimeters. And so I want to be about seven millimeters in from the end, just there and in the center. Just there and the same on the other side. I'm making sure that I'm also seven millimeters from the top more like there so I'm just going to do a little cross to show where I want my hole and similarly on the other side make sure that they look about the same and I think they do I'm then going to drill a couple of holes with my 1.8 millimeter bit making sure that I think it looks central one that looks okay and then I'm going to go through with my two and a half millimeter bit and then I'm going to open up the hole so that the LED will pass all the way through I'll show you what I'm in using the body reamer so we'll just Just taking off a little bit at a time. Now that passes all the way through quite easily. I'll do the same on the other side. Now one interesting thing about these light lenses is that they've actually got a bit in the front that's almost made for a 3mm LED. So that actually sits right in there and that's going to give you the best kind of headlines that you can have. So that's actually going to be pushed in there. So if we just put this back on, providing you've got the holes in the right places, That should be able to go in, and if I just take the second one, that should be able to go in too. Okay, so I'll just lift this off for a moment. And we're going to drill a couple of holes each side because I know that the rest of the body is going to go flush up against this piece here. So taking my 1.8 millimeter bit, I'm just going to draw some holes. One there, so it's basically two each side and we're going to be posting the arms for the LEDs through these. So that we'll be able to keep everything nice and flush. probably about three or four millimetres apart in line with these holes. Okay, that's that. 
with these videos I'm not trying to teach grandmothers how to suck eggs but I know that there are different levels of knowledge and experience. LEDs come with two leads on them and the longer one is always going to be the positive. If you try and wire an LED around the wrong way it just simply won't light. So we need to remember that the long one is always the positive. So we're going to be bending the LEDs around like that. Hopefully you can see and you can see that I've got the long one here on the bottom. So that means that we're going to have the positive coming in because we're going to be wiring these in series and then the one for this side I'm going to want the long one on the top there so I'll just bend that so so I'll just thread those in should go so we have one like that so noting that the long one here is on the top doesn't matter if these get bent around a bit because they will take several bendings before they snap. And the other one like that. So you can see that we've got both of the LEDs poking through the holes. I can then take the grill, put it back on. And push the LEDs into those holes in the lenses. This one needs a bit of straightening up. So that's one in its hole that's the other one in its hole, so they're both firmly seated. Just make sure that I'm happy with that. Yep, I think I am. Okay, so just a quick recap. We've got the LEDs stuck down to this black back plate on the grill. This can still come off obviously, I'll just show you. But what the glue is doing is it's holding these lights in exactly the right place so that they plug into those sockets in the lenses. I'll just put that back. This goes in nice and easily. And then with the LEDs we've got the long one here which is positive coming in the bottom, the negative out of the top. The one on this side, we've got the long one, the positive on the top, with the negative, the shorter one, on the bottom. That means that when we wire it up, we're going to be putting the resistor here, and the positive will come into the resistor, it will go into the long wire, through the LED, out of the short one, into the positive long one on the other side, through the LED, and then back to the negative connector. So that should give us a good circuit protected by the resistor which will limit the current. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hop over onto the computer and we're going to work out the size of resistor that this circuit wants. Hopefully you can see what I can see on the PC. This bit of kit I've got is new to me but I think it will probably work so let's just give that a go. Open up the browser go into a website which I quite like for working out these things. 
this one here and you can see at the top the address of it I'll make sure that I put a link into that in the description and then simply all you do is you type in these bits and pieces and it's going to tell us what the resistance is so the source voltage we know that that's 7.4 because we've got a 2s lipo and the lighting circuit is being powered straight off it the diode forward voltage generally speaking the red and the green ones I think are usually 2 volts and the blue and the white ones are usually 3.3 so we'll have that the diode forward current for the sorts of LEDs that we're using in modeling I think that 20 is generally about the right thing to put in there and then we've got two LEDs in our array we've got two front lights so we'll just slip two and we're going to want it as a wiring diagram and then we just simply click this button here and it will design our array for us and what it's telling us is that we can have two of them in series if the combined voltages of the LEDs was more than 7.4 volts it would probably try and put it in parallel it's telling us that it's 47 ohms and that we're okay with a quarter watt resistor we could probably have an even smaller one than that but I think that that's got an element of safety margin in it as it happens the resistor which I'm using is quite a chunky one I think that the normal small ones are probably one eighth of a watt anyway that's given us our answer we can head back to the model and confidently install the resistor okay so now we know that we want 47 ohm resistors these are the ones which should be in the link below however they are quite big these are I think one watt and you probably need quarter watt which are the much smaller size but having too big a wattage isn't going to do any harm now apart from the fact that I bought these and I know that they're 47 or even I could read off the color bands and decode it I can also check using my multimeter so I just go on to the ohms dial and I'm actually going down to the lowest one which is the one that says 200 on it and if I just put the terminals across that let's see it's showing dead on 47 so we've got a number of ways of checking to make sure that we've got the right resistance if you put in a slightly higher resistor my experience is that all that that does is it dims the bulbs a little bit which is something we're going to be doing on the rear because I don't really like bright rear red lights unless of course they're brake lights oh apologies that in the last segment I managed to miss out filming gluing these things down and the bit you glue is literally just the metal prongs you don't need to glue the lights in place I'm sure people can work that out for themselves anyway so we're going to take one of these resistors put some glue on it and then just stick it down I get it right way around and then just stick it down in the bottom there I'll put an extra splodge just to make sure let that cool off meanwhile turn on the soldering arm and then we're going to want to link this terminal here from the resistor to the long one here on the LED and we're just going to bend those so that they're in line with each other so put that one there bend this one up a bit we don't need a load of excess so I'm actually going to chop the resistor on chop that. like so and then just push them together so that they're touching that should be okay and then get a dab of solder in there good push those down so that they're nicely out of the way and then we're going to want to link these two here and I've cut a small piece of black wire which is about an inch and a half long so I'm just going to trim this 
I'm just going to trim this one here and similarly with the other one. I don't feel particularly concerned that these are ever going to try and touch each other so I don't think I'll bother insulating with heat shrink if it was an exposed place possibly I would. The wire has been pre-tinned I'll just tin the leg here one two you don't want to hang around in here too long with the soldering arm because you might just start melting plastic this has been pre-tinned so I can go straight on with it that's fine then I'll just stick on the other end make it as straight as I can and there's not too much wire flopping around there so that shouldn't give us any problems now I've cut two lengths of the thin silicon wire and I've pre-tinned both ends each of them is about a foot long which should give us enough to get from the back of the truck to the front so I'm going to start with the red one I'm going to chop the leg on the resistor tin it just makes the wire stick more easily and then I'm going to attach the red wire to it make sure that's held firmly which it is and then I'm going to bend this one down In it and attach the black wire. That's fine. And then just to make sure that we've got a connection that won't easily pull out or snap, I'm going to give it a quick go with the glue gun. The thing to note is that the very bottom of this part here doesn't push up against the body in the way the top does, so you don't have to be quite as flush down here get some glue in there making sure that I include the red wire let that dry okay so I think it's time to do a quick test I'm just going to temporarily use a terminal block to put into the wires that we did in the last video the lighting circuit making sure we've got the right clarity just pop the wires from the front grill in there I am a strong believer in testing things as you go along and it would be very disappointing having wired it all the way around to find that something didn't work and that you would then have to take things apart and unthread the wires let's just test it and see if it works so we've got the transmitter all switched on and everything and if I go to channel 3, which on the transmitter is there, success, we've got lights. So we can now confidently put the front grill back on and thread all of the wires back through. So we'll just take that off. And we're going to start by making a couple of 1.8mm holes here, just behind where the terminal block is, being careful not to drill into the wires. And then taking our grill and making sure that this bit is nicely pushed in. First of all, thread the two thin silicon wires through those holes. And then gently pulling them as you move the grill closer to the car because you don't want anything getting caught up 
and then very carefully lining these two red tabs up with the hole and just pulling the wires at the same time gently just to make sure that they're not getting caught up. You'll find that the back of the grill lines up with these little black bits here and it will just push down and snap into place like that. And you can see that there's no fouling of any of these wires. And we can start our threading through. So, so the first place I want to go is I want to go behind here where the servo is. So if you did yours the same as me, you can just ease any big cables out of the way and then let these in, in their place. That can go down like that. And then I'll put the wires back in. So the bigger wires are going to be holding the thin ones down. That's okay. And then we're going to be following the same route as all of the other wires going down through the model. So that means going through here, the hole here, taking off this cable tie there, putting the wire through and then replacing it. <laughs> and then going all the way through to the back here and out. So I'll just do that. Okay, I think we're good. Now, I could solder these straight on to those two wires there, but I'm not going to do that yet because I'm going to wait until I've done the rear lights. So in the next bit of this video where we do the rear lights, we'll put those in, bring the wires around, and then we'll solder everything together at the end. You may feel that you could do with an extra cable tie at this point, and I think that I'm going to. So I'm just going to slip one underneath here and just bind all of these wires together so that they're well away from the body post which I know comes in this kind of area. So I'm going to push that right up, pull it back and that gets all of that nicely out of the way and especially this thin red wire which seems to want to stick up. So pull that flat. Okay. We could also, if we wanted to, put another one in here just to keep things away from the servo arm. So I think that I'll do that. I might as well. Because we know that we've got all of the wires in place which are going to the front of the truck. Yep, that's definitely better. Okay. So I think that that brings us to the end of doing the front lights. We're going to be doing the rear lights next and I think that I'm probably going to put that into a separate and very last video.